Okay, let's take another look at magnetism. Here we have a, a monster magnet. It's a six inches by two inches thick. It's a uh, N48 Gauss neodymium iron boron composite. Uh, let's take a look here really close. Have you ever wondered why a magnet is attracted to the centripetal point of another magnet? And why a steel ball is not? It is attracted to the centrifugal maximum velocity, the edge of the magnet. Well, obviously as I've explained before, although we'll get into further details later, that has to do with the fact that magnets, like these two right here in the center, these little 8 millimeter balls are neodymium iron borons. They have been electrified. What people think of as voidance or countervoidance, or in their vernacular, attraction and repulsion has nothing to do with magnetism. It does coincidentally, but only attributional. In other words, you're looking at the attribute versus the principle of what is causing quote-unquote attraction or repulsion. Now, let's remove these magnets a second and the little steel ball and now you're not going to see something new here but I can guarantee you you've never seen it done this way before let's take a look at what we have here are four of the exact same magnets little ball magnets except I've placed red and white tape around them to show you what's going on you can get a much better view of what is happening on a magnet when you use a monster like this as a demonstration tool. You see how we're getting attraction at the centripetal point at the very dead center of this magnet. Now you'll also notice as I rotate around in a circle on the magnet how notice the precession angle You'll notice it better if I hover directly above the center and make circles around. As I come down, you'll notice the processional angles get tighter and tighter and tighter. And the further away we are, the greater the angle of dielectric precession. Nature does not work against her own pressures. Low pressures do not move against high pressures in nature. Obviously, and logically so. Now, watch our magnets as we come to the other side. And here we go. I just have this in a, a Ziploc bag, actually. Now, watch what happens when we come here. And notice as I go around the periphery, dielectric attracts the dielectric. As stated before many times, the edge of every magnet is a dielectric inertial plane. That is what is causing the special magnetodielectric in field incommensurability as part and parcel of any quote unquote magnet. And let's come up above here and you'll see this. So let's do it quicker so you can get a better idea. This is a really powerful magnet. Its Gauss rating isn't that high, but you're talking about major volume. Gauss rating only goes so far. You could have a low Gauss magnet, but if it's a giant beast like this, then you have massive volume regardless of the low Gauss level. However, this is not a low Gauss level, but... I just want you to see what is going on here. You see as I go around the periphery of the magnet, maybe you can see better this way, do you see that? Oh, now we're going to have to get it off of there. I got a little too close. Nice. Once you get a better understanding of what is happening. Now look at the precession angle. You notice how drastic the precession angle is. The further out I am spatially from the centrifugal and the centripetal fields. And as I come closer towards the centripetal at the center, which is where it's attracted, as I spin it around, the precession angle gets less and less. Centripetal vortex is coming down here towards the center. It is approaching increasing velocity. 
Just like a tornado has low velocity up in the clouds and high velocity where it destroys everything on the ground, where it throws houses apart and dogs and cats go flying in the air. And as I told you before in another video, you're seeing the uh, processional angle along the centrifugal here. You notice how radical it is? Nature only works at the lowest possible pressures. Nature does not do extra work. Nature does not do math. Nature does not do algebra. Nature does not have a calculator and do trigonometry. Nature has never heard of E equals MC squared. There are only three principles or conjugates in nature. Charge, discharge, centrifugal, centripetal, and what was the other one? Spatial and counterspatial. Dielectricity is counterspatial. Magnetism is polarized. Definitionally, polarization means spatial. So, spatial, counterspatial, centripetal, centrifugal, charge and discharge. Nature does not do math. I want you to understand what's going on here because while you can see field demonstrations anywhere, what you don't understand is the processional angles which you can only see with a giant monster magnet like this. It makes things more clear and more lucid. And watch the four ball magnets flip as I come up here and you'll see how it wants to jump. It's in perfect parallel to the dielectric inertial plane which is where it wants to dump its dielectric inertia. Each one of these ball Sphere neodymiums, of course, have their own dielectric inertial plane. They want to return there, but if I bring it up here, they also want to terminate here. This is voidance. What you call attraction is dielectric voidance. As you'll read in the book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, when you take a thin magnet and break it, if you keep breaking it, it'll come smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but that's not the polarities of the magnet attracting each other. What it is is the dielectricity spatially folding a magnet. You can read about that in Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. The math for this principle is also found in Dr. Oleg Defenchenko's work. So, I hope you learned something. Obviously this is just showing field, uh, field reciprocation, but most importantly you cannot see these types of processional angles using a standard size magnet. Most people don't have one of these monster magnets to play with and it's hard to show processional angles with a tiny little magnet. And if I let it open in the bag a little bit more you're able to see the processional angles more. It's hard to spin this around because it's constantly wanting to jump right to the magnet. That's the voidance. So remember what I first showed you at the beginning of this video, why a magnet is attracted to the center of another magnet, the centripetal vortex returning to the dielectric inertial plane. And why a steel ball? You can never place the steel ball in the center of any magnet. It will immediately jump to the edge with the maximum velocity of the centrif a centrifugal divergent velocity is. It is undergoing magnetization is being magnetically inducted, that is the applied field. Those steel or iron balls, rather, are not electrified. That is why those iron balls come here. We'll explain that further in future videos. I hope you saw something here. Most of what you saw here was not new, however, you saw the processional angles, so download the book and uh, email me with any questions that you have and I'll be uh, happy to answer them for you. Thanks for watching. Bye.